Hey, what is going on everybody? Boylon here and today I want to talk to you all about my first impressions of day one of the Morgan Le Fay Pestilence event. So I've had a pretty good a few attempts on, on doing various difficulties on this. I kind of want to give my thoughts on it so far. Some of the struggles that I have, some of the tips that I have actually after doing it, for those of you who may be struggling, and, and some of the and how far I've gotten actually, which is a bit more surprising than I thought. And I think that this event really favors people with wider rosters with larger TCPs, they're going to be able to take advantage, at least the higher difficulties anyways, uh, some extra ways or some easier ways in order to get nodes cleared. Obviously, like team power is going to matter in terms of your ability to be able to clear the nodes uh, and which teams you have built up because some are better than others. In this, I'll give some of my thoughts on the teams that I use to get through each node, um, at least in the higher difficulties. It's a little bit more flexible on lower difficulties, but I want to share this with you all. Anyway, so uh, without further ado, Let's get the show started. Okay, so this is me right now. Um, I'm at the final node of difficulty eight. Yeah, I managed to get here and it's with some scourges, believe it or not. Uh, so how I started this, can I zoom out? So how I started this whole thing, I'm gonna go back to the beginning down here is that I started difficulty five. I, I cleared that. Sorry, I started difficulty six. I cleared that, uh, which gave me the 500k, I'm pretty sure, the, the guaranteed 500k uh, to unlock Morgan. That way I could unlock her and I could put some gold in her at the store reset time because of that reset. So I did that, I cleared that. It, my first impressions anyways of, of difficulty six was that it was pretty easy, but then you're also, keep in mind that I have a roster of, you know, mostly gear tier 14 and 15 characters a lot of them some gear tier 16 characters um and, and so for me i do have quite a wide roster i have about 18 million tcp so i do have the characters that are required in order to clear this now for some of you who may not this is, might be a bit more a bit of a struggle for you than others um i do want to say that also for those of you in sort of the difficulty four and five area you can unlock D Morgan from difficulty four, but I feel it's very misleading uh, in some ways what um, uh, what Scopely told us. If you guys checked out my video from the other day when I went over the points and things like that and the scourges and what you needed to do to get that unlocked, basically you needed to do difficulty four with like 80% of all the scourges in order to get Morgan unlocked. So uh, the better thing to do was like difficulty five with like um, less scourges. I forget the exact number, check my spreadsheet. I'm not gonna bring that up in this video. And, and then difficulty six guarantees that that upfront Morgan unlock of 500K points. So the while you can unlock her at difficulty four, most people are not going to be stacking up 80% of all of the available scourges. It's just not going to happen. And one of the most disappointing things that I found with this event, actually, is that, to some degree, all of the scourges don't really matter, necessarily. Because, for the most part, you are going to get a better score if you go up the difficulty. Uh, the only... Uh, you would, like I said, you would have to stack up, like, all of the scourges. And then, even then, you get maybe... 15% more than a clean run and for those of you who don't know what I mean when I say clean run because somebody some people ask that a clean run is no scourges so you would get only a little bit more by stacking up all of the scourges than a clean run of the next difficulty so if you stacked up all of them on on, on difficulty five you would only be marginally better than a clean run of difficulty six which arguably is significantly easier because some of the scourges are extremely punishing and so you know it doesn't make a lot of sense and it's disappointing that you know it, it doesn't matter too much um where it is going to matter is if you're stuck on a difficulty you can't go up to the next difficulty then clearly the only additional way for you to get points is by adding some scourges on to you know get ahead of someone who does a clean run Right, so if you're stuck on difficulty seven, and you can't go to difficulty eight because difficulty eight is too hard or whatever, um, then you're gonna want to add on some scourges to seven to differentiate you from the other players, you know, who just did a clean run of seven and left it there. Now I'm on difficulty eight here, and I actually applied thirteen scourge points. These were some of the easier ones that I felt, and uh, you know, if you've seen my other video, sorry that my head's in the way, uh, I decided to choose these four 
Experimental Serum, which is 10% max health. ICU, when a player character gains stealth, they gain taunt. Uh, this actually o largely only matters to Miles. And even in Node 5, I actually got to the point where I was disrupted <laughs> by Kitty Pride as an enemy. <laughs> and that um, meant that I actually didn't get the taunt when I went into stealth. So that was fortunate for me. And that was the only instance that I really ever noticed this. A uh, Quality Minions. Summoned enemies gain 20% max health and back in the fight. When an enemy is healed, they gain deflect. There were certain instances where this was annoying, but I believe this was worth um, eight, seven, six, no, I don't know. It was, it was worth like, this is one, one, and that might have been one as well. So this might have been 10 for back in the fight, actually. And I didn't notice that this was significantly impactful. Certain instances where you ran into characters like Maria Hill. I think that was probably the most noticeable when she did her ultimate to heal, then everyone got a deflect, and it was kind of annoying, but it's just kind of that you have to punch into more dam uh, to, to a little bit more damage, same with the health, you know, and so long term it didn't make a big difference. What I want to share with you guys is a strategy that I've done um, for some of my nodes in order to get through it, especially in difficulty 8. Because this is where uh, this is where it's going to make the biggest difference. And so I actually got to use in the first two nodes, which is requires hero characters. I actually got to use my Young Avengers. I know not everyone's going to be able to do that, uh, but I felt actually quite good that I was able to use my Young Avengers in outside of War, uh, because I'm probably one of few people who actually have a very built up Young Avengers, and it felt nice that I was able to use them. So it is what it is. Uh, but for I know that most people aren't going to have that. Um, otherwise, I actually use this team as well in the hero section. So this is the Eternals Kestrel. I use Squirrel Girl, insert whatever other hero character you want in here, uh, and Shang-Chi. Now, what I normally recommend is don't overlap your characters that you're going to be using in other sections, because it kind of screws around with your ability energy, and you're not going to have, unless you're really, really good, you know, you're not going to have your ability energy lined up for that next lane that you might need them. And for example, like the Eternals are usable in Cosmic, but I used Infinity Watch, so I didn't really have that much problem. If you don't have Infinity Watch and all you have is, say, Kestrel, Eternals, and some combo of that, then you might not want to use your Eternals in this section. Other alternative teams that you could use, Astonishing X-Men, but I tried to use them here on Node 2, and they actually kind of sucked. So maybe you can use them on other difficulties lower than 8, but 8 I found them very challenging to use. One thing that you might also have to do is use Burner Teams. I didn't do this on nodes 1 and 2, and you might not know what the word burner teams mean, and it's basically just throwing random shit at the enemies to get them to burn their cooldowns so that when you go in the second time, it's a bit easier. This is a bit, sometimes a bit of a strategy on uh, Dark Dimension, sometimes this is a bit of a strategy in raids sometimes, you know, and that just makes it a little bit easier. I didn't have to do it for nodes 1 and 2, but I did do it for nodes 3 and 4. Uh, so you can see here that attack number 1, I used astonishing uh, uncanny x-men here with red guardian to soak up some damage here and then i went in with my real team and this is what i was using for the global section was secret avengers shuri and scarlet witch now my scarlet witch is quite large at 160k you could insert another fifth character there um you you could use doom but doom is a very strong villain that you might want to save for later on i just happen to have uh, Scarlet Witch here, and she actually has Avengers Synergy, which means that Maria Hill can cleanse if Scarlet Witch has any negative status effects, so uh, that helped me a little bit there as well. Uh, once again, I did the exact same thing for Node... Oh, sorry, not Node 4, no, Node 4 here. I used another Burner team as well, I just used some random characters, some Magnetos and crap, and then I went back in. Um, I actually, on difficulty 8 anyways, I lost my Shuri and Scarlet Witch, and I didn't care enough to, like, redo the level, so I brought in Mr. Sinister and Baron Zemo, they did end up dying during the battle, but then my Secret Avengers prevailed, and so I got through that on uh, node number four. But I did go in once again with a burner team to clear out some cooldowns. So this is where rider, wider rosters are really going to help you to get through the Scourge events, especially in the harder difficulties when the start of the match is a bit of a challenge for you to you know because of those cooldowns. Uh, node number five, I actually used Web Warriors here, but I want to say for all the people who are saying that Dark Hunters are useless, they're not. I use them actually. Uh, my Dark Hunters one shot difficulties five, six, and seven 
Believe it or not, um, I did use Ghost Spider as a fifth member, uh, but I was able to clear those three difficulties with Dark Hunter. So they aren't useless. However, most people should have prioritized Web Warriors over Dark Hunters. I did both because, well, I'm actually having a bit of a trouble for Node 10 right now. Uh, so I, I think that Node, I, I think that Dark Hunters are going to be a good cleanup team. And, and frankly, the, or, or, you know, they act as that burner as well. You could if you need it. Um, difficulty eight is super hard. I think, in, in my opinion, for the, the last, <laughs> the last node, I actually think node node ten is harder than node five. Some people are saying node five is is a challenge. It's not. It wasn't really for me. Uh, but node ten is giving me some problems. Uh, so dark hunters aren't useless again. But I just think that uh, people are overblowing it. Uh, having both is helpful. And frankly, I just love dark hunters anyways. I'm um, having a lot of time, good times using them in war. So I don't think it was a waste of my resources. But you know, mileage will vary depending on how high you built them. Uh, missions number six and seven villains once again i did a burner team so i just threw some random villains out of the enemy and then i brought in my black order and surprisingly my black order um was about 700 k 720 or something like that and they actually carried me through difficulties five six and seven and they cleared both the villains nodes no problem um they were actually incredibly powerful in this villain section and i didn't at least in five six and seven i never even had to bring up my weapon x or anything like that i did need to do that for difficulty eight though so i managed to clear it through this um i i i ended the battle i think with low hit points so you can see here that i went in for this next mission seven and actually i had to use a burner team and then i actually brought in my black order uh, my thanos had his alt ready so with offense up on spawn i used my alt. i did some damage i did some decent damage anyways but overall, I had to bring back in my Weapon X, which was Omega Red, Lady Deathstrike, Doc Ock, Doom, and Sabretooth. Did not use Silver Samurai, didn't really need to. Um, by the time I brought in my Weapon X, it was about uh, maybe half dead already. So after that, it was pretty easy. Once Doom God's Time Platform, it was pretty much over. So um, I, I kind of recommend not using, if you think you're going to need to use Doom up here, don't use Doom down here for Global. I, I would try to refrain from that if you can at all. And then we got to Missions 8 and 9. Infinity Watch just effing cleared this pretty easily. I did actually have some struggles at the very end of node number nine. Maybe some of this might have to do with, like, you know, my scourges. I don't know. You know, extra hit points, the deflect part, because there was, like, a Nick Fury in there healing and, and crap. I don't know. It, it wasn't super challenging, though, and Infinity Watch just cleaned up in all the other difficulties, uh, difficulties five, six, and seven. So eight was uh, not really much of a struggle. I probably I could have brought back in my Eternals if I really had to because they were still alive. And so where I'm at right now is Mission 10. And uh, I'm having a bit of a struggle. I'm not sure if I'm going to end up clearing it. Uh, but for the points that I have thus far, anyways, I'm at 1.13 million. Now, previously, when I did difficulty 7, a clean run, that got me about this, 858,000. And you can kind of see here on the, the breakdown that my turn bonus modifier was really good in difficulty 7 because I cleaned it up really quickly. I cleared the nodes pretty quickly. Uh, when it comes to difficulty eight, obviously I took way more turns because it was way more hit points. The powers were higher, the hit points were higher, all of that. So I did not clear this as quickly, and so my turn bonus is about twenty two hundred less. That being said, you know after adding in the uh, the extra scourge modifiers of thirteen points, that was equivalent to probably about um, tw I'm going to say twenty five thousand points. So that would have made up for anything that I would have lost from... Oops, I didn't mean to click on that, that yet. That would have made up for anything that I would have lost from the turn bonus. So keep that in mind there. Again, you're going to want to find the scourges that are most comfortable for you. I think from here on, if I'm not able to clear um, this second node, I'm going to have to go back and see what else I can add on to that and try to basically beat my own score at this point. And that's kind of what it's at. So finding the difficulty where you're kind of capped out at and then you add the scourges that you're most comfortable with. And for that, I do recommend going back into my spreadsheet, which I have on my Discord channel. Or if you watch my previous video where I talked about it uh, just the other day, uh, we talked about all the different scourges and the points that it will give you uh, for each of the ones that you want to add on. And so that's really helpful in maximizing your score. Now let's talk about the score, right? After all that, we have the leaderboard. There are some cheaters on the cheater board, uh, and hopefully that will be removed soon. Number one. Uh, Crowley, if it's still, is he still there? Yeah, so he has a TCP of 1 million and a random strike team, and uh, yeah, obviously a clear cheater. I don't know why people would go out of their way to clearly cheat when, you know, what you want to do, if you're going to cheat at all, not that I'm saying that you should, absolutely you shouldn't, but be somewhere in the middle, right, where you're not going to get caught. These idiots who were like at the top of the leaderboard, you know, are going to get caught, and I, there was another one as well, actually, it was, what was his name again, Peg, or, oh, is this guy, I don't know, maybe not, Cripple? 
no, probably not. It's Platinum 3. There was a dude up here. Oh, good, good on you, Dorky Dad. Number 36. Good job. Uh, that's probably not going to be me. Uh, there's this one? Crash? Is that still there? 1.2 million? Yeah. Level 70. I mean, you can you can see, in the, especially in the top 100, that's going to be suspicious. There was another one. Uh, maybe they got rid of it or, or people just pumped them down. I don't know. Don't really see it anymore. It doesn't really matter anyways. And so what's nice, though, is you can find your results or my results. And so I where am I? I'm at 694. I mean, that's great for now, but obviously that's going to change uh, over the coming days and weeks or week. And um, who knows where I'm going to end up. And so I think it's kind of interesting that you can see where you're currently at because that kind of shares, well, uh, you know, you can kind of constantly know how you're doing. Now, there was an interesting post in one of my YouTube videos from the other day, basically suggesting that because you can see where you're at compared to everyone else in terms of the rankings, right? Well, it kind of turns into an almost an arena fest in the last day because you're trying to outbeat somebody else, especially if you want to score in the top 5,000. And I think that's probably where it's going to come down to is that like, I don't know, maybe you'll snipe. Um, I, I don't know why you might do this, but like if you were to do it like arena and you know, you snipe at the last minute and so you like redo your run, but you do like a couple more scourges. And so it gives some people, especially those who are on the edges of the brackets, a false sense of security about their score. And so I don't know how impactful this is going to be or if this is something that we should have a big concern about. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think about that, uh, whether or not this is going to be a big thing. It might not be for the first time, but it could be for subsequent runs and maybe other Scourge events or other Horseman events. I'm not sure. So currently, technically... Uh, it says that I'm in like 680 or whatever it was. So technically I'm here. But I know for a fact I'm not going to stay there. Uh, while that would be amazing. Um, you know, honestly, I, I'd be happy with getting a 5-star Morgan. Uh, to get a 5-star Morgan, for those who don't remember, you need to be in the top 5 to 6% or higher. Uh, to get a 6-star, you need to get in the top 2,000 or better. And uh, that's where you need to be for that. And anywhere in between would just give you some chars between a five and six stars. And for those of you who don't remember all as well, uh, these are multiples of 15, packs of 15 times whatever number here. But these are first time event rewards. So for the second time around in the Scourge event, you are not going to get this. So yes, at the end of day one, I am cleared the 1 million milestone. I guess great for me. And I'm going to try and smash my head against this Node 10 a little bit more, maybe, or on live stream later on today. Um, otherwise, I'll reset the run and add some more scourges on and see where I can maximize my score. So that's Pestilence in a nutshell. Um, yeah, let me know how you've been doing so far on your event at the end of day one, basically. And what more are you going to do? Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this, like over 10 days, because I, I you know, it, the first time is around for quite a while, and I'm not going to be spending hours every single day to try and maximize my score. I think there's going to be a lot of people who are probably going to take the lazy route and just do a run and call it a day. What I do recommend, though, is if you're going to do that, um, add on a couple scourges just so that you're ahead of people who just do a clean run, right? You know, so you want to be ahead of those people who just do clean difficulty six or seven or whatever run that is. Add a couple of scourges to make sure you're ahead of them, uh, just to, you know, make sure about that. So that's my last tip here. So thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, that's the end of the video. Of course, like and subscribe. Please don't forget to do that. I'm trying to hit 10 million. No, 10. I'd love 10 million, 10,000 subscribers. That's the more realistic goal. So if you haven't already, please smash that like and subscribe button down below. That'll definitely help the channel. And of course, until next time, stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you all later. Boylan signing out.